This week on Maker Update, a giant AT-AT made from foam, the Goliath CNC robot, embossing your notebook, affordable addressable LED strip, a software update for your knitting machine, and World Maker Fair. It's Wednesday, September 30th, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. How are you guys doing? I've been feeling pretty motivated recently to wrap up some projects. I was invited out to a maker party to do a show and tell in a few weeks, and that's lit a fire under me to get some stuff done. I hope you're feeling fired up too. Let's get on with the show, starting with the project of the week. This week on Instructables, I came across a gigantic 17-foot prop of a Star Wars AT-AT by Kyle Gilbert. The construction is made mostly of pink foam insulation boards that have been cut and glued to an interior skeleton of plywood and 4x4s in the legs. All in, the project took up about $1,000 in materials, but, I mean, you get an AT-AT in the end. Or at least half of one. One thing I love about this project is that it was made possible by another Instructable. In order to get useful blueprints for making this giant AT-AT, Kyle's team referenced the design for a small wooden desktop AT-AT by Seamster on Instructables. By projecting these shapes and tracing them onto foam board, the team was able to rough out all the parts needed and then take the extra steps to make it their own. Using a jigsaw and a sander and a sawzall, they were able to whip the design into shape. One tip I bookmarked from this project is the Loctite foam board adhesive they used to glue everything up. It sounds like it takes a while to cure, but it's strong and won't eat into the foam. Time for some news. Last week was the official announcement of the Goliath CNC robot. Instead of fixing a board onto a router table, the Goliath is basically a robotic router you plop right onto the board you want to cut. It uses three Omni wheels, allowing it to instantly travel in any direction. The router clamps in and the cable pops out from the top carrying power and data to the system. On video, it looks pretty sweet, and aside from it having a significantly smaller footprint than a CNC router table and being portable, the other big advantage is that you can presumably use it on an infinitely large sheet stock. But what everyone's wondering, aside from the price, which hasn't been announced, is how can it possibly cut accurately without vibrating out of position? Is it super heavy? Does it somehow compensate or calibrate while it's working? What are the limitations? We'll know more details when Goliath officially launches in a few weeks, but this could be the most talked about new maker tool of the year. I have another project to share with you. This one comes from Mikasaurus, maker of the legendary flamethrower skateboard. It's a cool trick for embossing letters or design onto a Moleskine notebook. By taking any kind of hard plastic letter board letters, sanding off any nubs and taping them down and clamping them in a sandwich of wood to evenly distribute the pressure, you can create permanent embossing on your notebook. It's a neat effect, and I'd be curious to see what you could do with 3D printed text or designs. After Duresta's tip on 3D printed movable type from a few episodes back, I'd have to think you could really have some fun experimenting with this. It's time for another Cool Tools review. This time around, I'm going to show you guys a 16-foot reel of WS2812B addressable LED lights. I got these for under $30 on Amazon, and by using the link in the description to pick some up, you help support my videos and the Cool Tools blog. There are an incredible range of maker projects out there that take advantage of Adafruit's NeoPixel Arduino code and NeoPixel brand of LEDs. Using the code or a competing code library like FastLED, you can control and animate the color and brightness of each LED on the strip using just a single data wire. The WS2812B variety of addressable RGB strip is compatible with both NeoPixel and Fast LED code. It works with Arduino or Raspberry Pi. They run off 5 volts, though you can get away with 3.3 for short runs, and you can cut it to whatever length you want using the cut lines on the strip. This strip in particular has a black backing and comes with a waterproof casing. Both ends are wired with a 3-pin JST connector. Best of all, with 16 feet of this stuff for under $30, it's an incredible savings over the name brand stuff. I bought this specifically to give my kitty car some animated underglow so it would look cool at night. This, a $10 Arduino compatible Gemma board, and a battery pack were all I needed. I even had LEDs left over. Now the downside of using this stuff is that it's not enough just to wire it up to power. 
you have to have a board of some kind sending instructions over the data wire. So if you're not at all comfortable with Arduino or Raspberry Pi project boards, these are not the LEDs for you. For me though, having a cheap quality source for these has really opened up some project possibilities. If you'd like to get some for yourself, using the link in the description takes you right to Amazon. And remember, you can see thousands of reader recommended tools like this at cool-tools.org. A few more tips to share with you this week while I was hooking up these LEDs and figuring out the right way to power both the boards and the lights, I took a moment to re-familiarize myself with John Park's guide on level shifting. The best way to get a 3.3 volt board to talk to a 5 volt LED strip is to shift up the voltage on the data pin to match the LEDs. John's guide on Adafruit shows how to accomplish this with an eight channel logic shifter board. As an alternative for the kitty, I just wound up running both the board and the LEDs at around four volts and they seem happy for now. Over on Hackaday, I found the Noob's Guide to McMaster Car. For the unfamiliar, McMaster Car is basically God's own hardware store. They have everything, but the interface for finding the exact thing you want can be intimidating. This guide helps a little, or at least it helps you feel like you're not alone in both loving and hating them. And for all of you fans of CNC knitting, a new version of the AAB software is out, version 0.9. AAB stands for All Yarns Are Beautiful. It's an open source project that is an alternative for controlling old brother knitting machines. The new software update fixes a number of bugs. There are no new features, though it will give you a little beep now when it's done knitting. Maker Fairs, this weekend we've got World Maker Fair in New York. I'll be watching the action from my couch on the live stream and I wouldn't be surprised if there were some announcements or product launches at the show. Overshadowed but not forgotten, we also have Maker Fairs in Milwaukee, Manhattan, Kansas, Ashland, Oregon, Vermont, Raleigh, North Carolina, Dortmund, Germany, and Nuremberg, Germany. And for those of you in the San Francisco area, I'll be showing off the night mode on my kitty go-kart at the You've Got My Eyes Science Fair Swap Meet Dance Party thing on Saturday, September 30th. It's a free event at a semi-secret location that you have to figure out by plugging in the latitude and longitude here just to keep things nerdy. As a tip, don't forget that minus sign in front of the longitude. And that's it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I love hearing from you guys. Pick up some of that LED strip if you are so inclined. It's also great for Halloween projects. So think about that. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.